Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another Sunday night nightcap. Tonight's nightcap, as usual, contains a lot of machining. Uh, there's actually some welding in this week's nightcap as well. I get the crankshaft finished for the little vertical steam engine I'm rebuilding. Uh, through a quite a lot of that. Actually get it mounted into the engine and get a turn over, like a trail turn over. Um, quite happy with the result. This week I've been busy doing some video for a company called Artec. Artec make welding machines. You've probably seen some of my videos. Uh, this one's high power welding using a, a make spool gun. I show a little bit of that. And towards the end of it, um, I did some weld tests. I'll show some of them, and then definitely go with the the MIG welder. And as you can imagine, she's even good at MIG welding now. The medium, so I put some of that in towards the end. I'm going to draw the name out of the bucket uh, for this week's raffle, which was that little Mercer 80 i gauge. we a good rake about. I know Steve had his nose in there last weekend, really gave him a good sort out. Right, that one. Name says Paul Quinn. Right, Paul, I'll get that posted off to you this week. I'm going to do another draw this week, another prize draw. Uh, this week's prize draw is going to be for the viewer mail that came in this week, which is this micrometer, digital micrometer, which is obviously both in and metric, quite a nice little unit. Comes with a box, so that's going to be given away this week. If you want the chance to win that, all you have to do is send me an email. That's my email address up there somewhere. Send me an email with your name. Your name goes into the bucket. If your name's drawn out, I'll post this to you anywhere in the world. Your name remains in the bucket until it's either drawn out or I'm not doing this anymore. Or anyway, I'm going to keep doing this. Um, it's a way, just a little way of saying thanks for all the help I've had. People are sending things in now. Just for the giveaway, I've got lots of DTI gauges, calipers, I've got plenty of stuff to give away. So, like I say, email, that's all I need. This is the micrometer that was kindly sent in for this week's draw. Completing a nice fitted case with its test piece and its adjustment spanner. The guy that sent it in wants to remain anonymous, that's fair enough. Anyway, I know who we are, and thanks very much. Next Sunday, uh, Deb and I will be flying out to America, uh, to the YouTube bash, which is going to be a, a fantastic experience for both of us. Um, we're stopping with one or two friends. Friends I've met through the internet, really. I haven't actually met them in person, but it's going to be fantastic to meet these people and also meet the, the various YouTube creators. Um, we're also going to go to Vancouver Island to meet a person who was very special to Deb. Um, the person who did a video for Deb, which was really quality, and that had a massive effect. It, it lifted our spirits up. Uh, so I'm going to go and meet these people. <laughs> I'm sure that's going to be quite emotional, but it'll be, uh, be certainly very nice to do. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody who supported us by buying t-shirts or how I have supported us. I'm just clicking the like button. That supports us um, because it's without all my viewers' support, as we all would be able to, uh, to afford to go to this. Um, it's, it's probably a once in a lifetime opportunity. And uh, the, all the problems we've had uh, over the years, it's, it's something we're just going to do. Right now we're getting to the stage where We need to make certain that our tailstock centre isn't bending the crank in the well, little spacer piece here isn't bending the crank. I've adjusted this so it's just touching and when I load up the tailstock it's got it's got a hole of it there. So if we loosen it off, it's just touching load it up and it grips it 
that's a bit of silver steel I use when I board the or at least when I ream the the bearings and that's absolutely spot on one inch which just goes to show that the make is actually set up correctly as well we'll measure the measure the shaft we're showing 17 thought to go I'll take a 5 thought cut that's 5 a side, that's going to leave it 7 I want to clean up on this dimension really slowly one other thing I need to check before I take any more off the shaft at all obviously there's no run out but I want to loosen off the tailstock centre and there's still no run out tighten it up and that just shows it well the little space up piece I've got in here is not causing the crank to bend in the tension I've just got it nipped nice in the tension that I've got on the tailstock is equaled out by the pressure I've got on there okay, I've dented in 5 thou and I've locked the cross fade off I've also slowed down the feed rate and that would appear to put a really nice finish on I'm going to stop it and measure it again right that's going to leave 8 thou I'll run that cut full length Bit of water. Putting a really nice finish on there. It's a seven thou oversize of both ends. Tail in three. This should take it to basically dead on size. I'm trying to turn it to a finish, I don't want to start pissing about with every tape if I can help it. Not on stainless anyway. And that's a thousand and a half of our size. In one more half thou. Okay, this should make it absolutely spot on. Horrible, nasty, stringy bastards. Look at them. That's absolutely blob on one inch. And possibly a couple of tenths on now, which is all right because it it wants to be a running fit. Okay, we'll go for that.
I mean, that's a fanny's hair under inch, a couple of tenths if that, which is basically what I'm after. Swap it over now end to end. This should be the last cut on the other side of the crank as well. Dead on one inch, just what we want. Nice slow feed rate, putting a, a really good mirror finish on. You can see the crank's running through now, this end's running through as well. We need to get this mountain in the bevens tonight temporarily and make sure I've got the strut the right length. Too late, I can see it on a pain in grief. We're hoping chips out. Aluminium as well, so it'll it will just bend. Right, I've assembled the crank, the big end and things. Uh, all these bearings are tight now. And there's a little bit of some end fluid in the shock, which is what you want. Which means there's nothing bending anyway, there's end fluid all the way. It turns over lovely. It's actually making steam engine noises through there. I've got the piston in, so we've got the, the stroke right. There's a little tight spot there, but nothing that'll not it'll not run in very nicely. It went together no problem at all. So now we've got the makings of a, a working steam engine. There's counterbalance weights to go on. I've got the crank to drill for the oil feed from this main bearing into the big end. There's an eccentric to make for it, still in the head to make for it. There's plenty of bits and pieces to do, to, plenty of good video to come from this project. But I think the crankshaft was probably going to be the hardest bit. I've quite enjoyed doing it. If I were to do another one the same way, I would do things different. I would bore and ream them holes in one setting on the milling machine, not the lathe. And basically, I'm very happy with it. I mean, it would take massive counterbalance weights on there to, to balance all this, but every little bit will help. I get quite a decent, a decent web in there, a decent piece in. Very hobby. Right, we're quite happy now. We've got a crankshaft that's a. Lovely fit in the bearings, nice free turning. It's got plenty of movement in it, plenty of play in it, so once the engine's finally assembled, I can make some little brass thrust washers for in there. The lubrication on the engine, obviously it's got low points on the main bearings. And if you remember, I did drill this main, and I did drill the big end. So what I'm going to do is drill down through here into the crank, to break into the drilling through there, and I'll drill down through there, break into the big end. That hole there will be pinned. That hole there will be pinned, or sorry, that hole there will be plugged. That hole there will be plugged. And then the oil will go down there, into the crank, through the journal, out of the big end. Just the same as it does on a pressure-fed system on a modern internal combustion engine. 
I'm not sure how I'm gonna lubricate this when the engine was actually built, but that's what I'm gonna do. Right, that's marked that that's all we need. Right, so that's the, the mark there, so we'll drill through, break into that drilling, drill straight down through there and break into that drilling. Then we've got one hole at the blank, one hole at the blank, and there'll be pieces bolted on here, counterbalance weights, that'll blank that drilling off. This is the piece you've just seen as well, it's actually still warm. There's several methods of testing welds. There's one method of testing a weld that gives an instant result. The trouble is, it destroys the part. It's basically a kinetic test. Right, so we'll give it some. I mean, I'm hitting that, I'm really trying. And there's no attempt at the weld to tear away. Uh, I think you get the idea that it's quite a sound weld. Right, basically that's going nowhere. This is the weld we did earlier, the, the real heavy block onto the half inch plate. What I'm going to do with this is cut down through it and then polish it and then put a chemical on which will actually show the weld slug to show how much weld penetration we've actually got. And the one we're just doing the kinetic test, I'll cut that one as well, polish it up put the chemical on and see what sort of results we've achieved. Right, I've polished up the two test pieces. I'm just going to warm them up. Not stupid hot just to look to get the chill off them. Right, next for that chemical treatment, uh, the chemical I'm going to use is an oven cleaner. The active ingredient in the oven cleaner is sodium hydroxide. I'm wearing gloves, the garage is well ventilated, and I've got eye protection on. You don't play with these things. Right, so we'll put some of that on. And what happens is, the sodium hydroxide reacts with the aluminium. It reacts with the aluminium weld which is basically a cast metal in a different way that will react with the aluminium parent metal which is probably an extrusion um, the grain structure will be totally different and that's why it gives a different a different effect on the weld metal than it does the parent metal I've left the chemical on all night and you can see it's got a definite difference between the parent metal and the weld metal. Same on this one. Quite pleased with that result, quite a nice, nice looking weld. Right, aye. Yeah. I'll tell you this, that's pretty good, that bit. One more go? One more go. Go a little bit slower. A little bit slower. Right. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what it is. It's not bad, Dad. Yeah, it's cracking. Take your hat off. Can I just put that on there? Yeah, I'll just put it on there. Right. That's cracking. Do you like it? <laughs> That's better than the other one. Is it? Yeah. As you can see. Yeah. That's aluminium big welding. Go on, you Deb. <laughs> Auntie Deb.